Hey guys, we are back with another art room organization video. I know. For this one, we're gonna have to get on the floor, but to be honest with you, I'm too old to get on the floor. If I get down there, I can't get back up again. So I'm gonna grab the stool and I'm gonna sit down. All right, I'll be back. So I'm sitting on a stool on the floor near that. Why? Because we're gonna talk about paint. And by association, coloring supplies, I suppose. So I have a specific way I store my paints and coloring type supplies that really works for me. It's a new thing to the new space. It's not the way I did it in the old space, but it definitely works here. So I do have two Ikea carts and in the old space I used to store a lot of my coloring supplies there. It didn't really work for me, especially in the new space it didn't. But I have this wall back here, which I've put this, some more of this white wire shelving on, which I love, which is from Target. And then I've binned or boxed supplies by category. So let's review that, shall we? Let me turn the camera okay, around. Okay, lighting might be a little funny. I do live in the Portland, Oregon area and it's overcast again outside. <laughs> anyway, as you can see by these first few bins, I do have things um, marked by category. Like these are just plain acrylic paints. These, uh, these are, um, they're both acrylic paint. And they're both marked as such, but the clear bin is more artist acrylic paint, things that you would use if you were painting a canvas. These are more craft acrylic paints, things you would use if you were just working in a journal or doing a craft project. Um, the, this little bin in between is just because I had nowhere else to put that, and I've got my museum wax. Anybody who's lived in earthquake country, you know what that is. It's to stick your breakables down to your shelf so when you have an earthquake, things don't readily fall over and break. <laughs> Um, and then I have coarse salt, ice cream salt in the back that I use for doing textures and some um, um, painting things like with watercolor. This is another bin of acrylic paint, but this is ma mainly Dina Wakely paint. This here is specialty paints like fabric paint. And actually I have nail polish in there. Overflow of the art paints and actually white flow acrylic in the back. I use the spaces between the bins to store sort of overflow until I use them up. Um, this down here is artist paints. Um, these are main, well, except that decor, um, deco art bottle in the front. These are mainly golden paints, golden fluid acrylic paints, and golden fluorescent paints. Metallic paint, ink. Um, we do have mediums over here, so we have glues, finishes. Whoops, where are we at? Fin Glues, finishes. Um, this is, um, again, is overflow, but it's mostly pouring mediums. Then we have just a general mediums tub. Ink pads, and yesterday I was just fiddling around with some stuff, so I've got this little tray stuffed in here of foils and foil glue, which actually doesn't belong there. So ink pads. I have these bins. These are specialty paints like um, acrylic wash my tubes of watercolor, and that's the Daniel Smith tube uh, bin. Oil pastels, oops, wait a minute. Oil pastels, soft pastels, Neocolor 2s and Sharpies. Alcohol inks and re-inkers. Um, sprays, don't have too many. I mean, I still have two more than I need, but there's not a ton, I don't think. Um, some glitter glues and clear gesso. Again, overflow. Um, glitter and texture, all your glitter textures, foils, and that's actually where that other bin goes. Um, gesso and grounds, and then embossing stuff, powders, glue, beeswax, all that stuff. All right, up here we have a little, another five drawer set of drawers, and I've got powdered pigments. I have a, um, some acrylic paints that are all just shades of gray some crayons and some liquid pencil, again, which are shades of gray paints. These are my pen and pencil storage by color, which I love and was from a YouTube video um, that I saw here a while back and I love it. So anything that I have pen or pencil wise that's red with a few exceptions, which I'll show you in a minute, is in that red and pink bin. So when I'm working on a journal page, I'm like, you know, I need to add some purple pencil. I just go grab that purple bin and bring it to the table. It works great. Okay, here I have extras of some of my favorite pens. 
these are just overstock. So when I run out of, say, a Bic pen at the table, I run out of ink, I just come over here and grab another one. So these first few um, cubby holes, that's what those are. Then as we, um, including paint pens, because um, I have like one of each at the table, but when I run out of paint in the pen, it dries up. I come over here and grab a new one. Then as we go along, we have the bigger, fatter pens, which don't fit in the little cubby drawers, mainly your big brush, um, uh, Faber, is it Faber Castell? The pit, pit pens. Faber Castell pit pens. And also Permapake pens. Your chunky colored markers are over here. Um, the little drawers underneath are just random things like paper bead supplies and uh, leads and grinders and um, empty watercolor paint pans and stuff like that. Um, up here, by the way, here's the clock and it's going to be for sale. Somebody's interested, message me. I did that a while back. Um, anyway, these are all crayons, like water-soluble crayons. So you've got your Distress crayons, um, you've got your Rose Art um, crayons and highlighter crayons, which are water-soluble, and then you've got a bunch of these kind of sparkle crayons, and I think there's some Artist Loft like watercolor crayons in here. Um, this is just a, something that just came in. I need to put it away. Uh, another powdered pigment, which doesn't add some other ones that don't fit in that drawer over there. Colored pencils and chunky paint pens, which I'm trying to use up. Um, short colored pencils um, in colors and graphite, which I love to use and I usually use together. So these are in this bin. And again, these come out and I can just bring this whole bin over to the table. These are sort of spare multi-pens and... Um, these sort of, these are by Koi. There's the triang triangular uh, multicolor color pencils. And pencil sharpener, a random wooden stamp, and some more powdered pigments. Um, and down here, in case you missed it, this is where I store all my watercolor paints. I've labeled them for the most part on the side so I know which set is which because I do have quite a few of them in my collection. And um, that's that. This storage system works. For I'm me. not showing you the details of the paint storage so I can brag about how much I have. That's not the point. And I built up my collection over years, literally decades. The Daniel Smith paint collection alone, I would go into the art supply with 20 bucks and buy sometimes one tube of paint. And it took me a long time to build up my collection. I also made a few mistakes, like in the beginning, I would take a class and they would say you need Neo Color 2s, and I thought you needed them all, so I would buy just a set that had all of them in it. You don't need to do that. Go out and find your local art supply store, even if it's a little bit farther away, where they have open stock. Go get just a few in your favorite colors and go from there. There's a tip. So anyway, this is how I store my paint coloring supplies. It works for me, it works in my space. What do you do and what works for you? Let's share, not only here in the comments below, but over in the Facebook art groups. Let's see what happens and I would love to see what you do. I'm gonna link other videos of some of my friends and um, fellow artists here on YouTube who have done similar videos to see what they've done. And um, I'm gonna link them in the description below. So show everybody some love, like, share, and um, all of that stuff. Hit the little bell icon if you want no notifications and new videos because if you don't do that you won't get notified. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, see what my daily art practice is, go join one of those said um, art Facebook groups. Uh, click on the link tree list of links in the description below and you'll find all the places you can find me and support my free content here on YouTube and over in Facebook. There's a bunch of different ways. Um, there's also my happy mail address and a bunch of other stuff, so check out that description. The most important thing, of course, is to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.